German prisoners of war were treated so well in the American South during World War II that many of them sought to relocate to the United States once the war was over. See, a lot of the POW camps were in the South where white supremacy was pretty popular, so the German POWs actually had a lot in common with their captors, a status that was not afforded to the thousands of Japanese Americans or even the black American soldiers who were stationed in Southern internment camps. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. At the height of the Second World War in the early 1940s, singer Lena Horne was working with the USO, entertaining troops at North Little Rock's Camp Robinson. When she came out on stage, she noticed something right away that really bothered her. All the white soldiers were sitting up front and all the black soldiers were sitting in the back. Well, in the segregated South in the 1940s, that wouldn't have been so unusual. But in this case, it wasn't white American soldiers being given priority over black ones. No, the soldiers seated up front were actually enemy combatants. They were members of the German and Italian militaries. And not only were they being given the opportunity to hear world-class singers like Lena Horne, they were being given preferential treatment over men serving in the US military who happened to be black. When Lena Horne realized what was going on, she immediately made her way to the back of the room and sang directly to those black soldiers, turning her back on the German POWs. After a few songs, she became so disgusted with the whole situation that she refused to perform the rest of the show and she left the hall entirely. It should come as no surprise that the 16,000 Japanese Americans who were also being held at Arkansas camps in Robinson, Chaffee, and Dermot weren't welcomed nearly as warmly as the German POWs either. And many of those Japanese detainees were US citizens. And if you think about it, it kind of made sense. The Third Reich had declared itself the master race and had sought to expel Jews, Slavs, and other so-called undesirables that had also been a part of the underclass in the American South. So when Nazi soldiers were shipped over the Atlantic from Germany to detention camps in the Southern United States because there was no more room to house them in Britain, they didn't lose their superior status. Quite the contrary, they were elite prisoners of sorts who even outranked a lot of US military men of color in many ways. When Japanese Americans were rounded up and hauled off en masse after Pearl Harbor, their loyalty to the United States was questioned. They were a threat to national security and to white supremacy. By contrast, German soldiers were seen as racial equals who were simply caught up in an unfortunate clash of national priorities. As a result, the time they spent in detention camps in the South was fairly pleasant. Even the way that the German POWs were transported to those camps showed that they would be receiving preferential treatment. They were expecting to ride in boxcars, but instead they rode in style, in state-of-the-art Pullman cars receiving food service from black waiters. They had coffee and fruit for breakfast at the camps and ate turkey at Thanksgiving. One of the few German POWs who even bothered to escape walked around for days in his prison garb with the letters PW on his legs in bright yellow paint, and somehow he completely evaded the authorities. He eventually ended up at a Catholic church where some of the parishioners recognized him as an escapee. When the priest confronted him, he readily admitted who he was. The priest took him home with him, gave him a cup of coffee, and eventually convinced him to turn himself in. At Camp Robinson, the German POWs even bought class rings from a traveling salesman to commemorate their time there. Now, the German POWs did do work off-base, like picking cotton, which earned them a small salary that they could spend on things like cigarettes and beer. Letters obtained from several German POWs after the war indicate that they remembered their time at those Arkansas camps very fondly and many wished to return to the U.S., though no one really knows how many of them were able to follow through with that. But the very fact that they look back so fondly on their time in a U.S. Southern detention camp is an indication of just how strong the bonds of white supremacy can be, even in a time of war. 